if you are interested in getting into card altering or just curious what supplies I use, then this is the video for you. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, card altering is usually when you take some paints and you extend the art from the original card out across the borders. So this could be a floating border. Um, it could also be just a simple extension where you're taking the original art out to the sides of the card, a full art card, um, Pokemon as well. But over the years, I have tried a lot of different supplies and I know it can be daunting getting into card altering with all the different paints, brushes, what should I use? So I thought I would share some of the supplies that I have found work best for card alters. If you're anything like me over the years, you may have been gifted different craft supplies. I don't recommend going out and buying these sets, but these are exactly what I used when I first started altering just because I had them laying around already. And what I look for when selecting paints does involve just a little bit of color theory. I do have other videos that go into more depth on color mixing and color theory, but the main things that you just need to know now are your primary colors. So that is red, yellow, and blue. So what I'm looking for when I am selecting paints are those primary colors. So I know phthalo blue is a really nice one. This yellow medium and lemon yellow are good. Here we have a scarlet for a red. Lots of greens, but because green is between blue and yellow on the color wheel, we don't need these. We can mix those. So now we are really left with a primary color palette and this is all you need to mix really any natural colors so any sort of green orange violet you can make with just this limited palette i find it helpful to place my paints around the color wheel just to get a sense of where they fall so even when looking at two yellows you can see that yellow medium may have more of an orangish tone to it than lemon yellow and when looking at ultramarine blue and phthalo blue, I would say that ultramarine has more violet to it. Other colors that I pulled out are titanium white and burnt umber. It's nice to have these on hand, especially titanium white. This is one that I do recommend getting this specific shade. You can find it in a lot of different brands and different price points. So here are some Liquitex versions. Ones that I use more often. This is considered a fluid acrylic paint. And the reason I choose titanium white over maybe a zinc white is the opacity. So titanium white is going to provide much better coverage than a zinc white. And since with card alters we're wanting really good coverage, I always go with a big bottle of titanium white. I use a burnt umber, so in my own palette I tend to use this burnt umber and burnt sienna the most. And then the paints that I use typically for my primary palette, so I tend to go for fluid acrylics. So again, this is not where I started. Um, I started with these heavy body paints, but you could think about getting a magenta. I also use a phthalo blue. And I typically use yellow medium as well, which tends to be a bit orange. You could also consider using maybe a primary yellow or maybe for blue if you want one with a bit more violet to it, you could think about doing an ultramarine blue too. Once you have selected your primary colors, I would recommend painting your own color wheel. So this is with a magenta, ultramarine, and medium yellow. You'll see really vibrant purples here since both ultramarine and magenta tend to have more purple tones already versus a cadmium red which has more orange tones to it you're not going to see as vibrant of a purple shade here the other difference you can see difference between a yellow medium and a primary yellow so a primary yellow may be much better at creating those really vibrant bright green yellows versus a medium yellow which is a bit more of a muted natural tone and the last must-have paint that I use quite a bit is just a carbon black. You do not need a big bottle of this. Just a small one fluid ounce um, should be just fine. If you are just starting out and don't have any paints yet, you have the choice between 
getting a heavy body acrylic or a fluid acrylic. I prefer using fluid acrylics for altars since we're working in such small amounts and I really want my paints to be thin. Um, that's just to help with managing any sort of texture that may be in the cards. But if you prefer working with a heavy body, this is what I started with too. When purchasing paints, I would recommend just selecting one of each primary color. So in my case, I tend to use a magenta the most this phthalo blue and this yellow medium the most. So again, there were some alternatives that I sometimes prefer to use instead, but I would just try to select one of each primary color to create your primary palette and get really comfortable with mixing those colors. In addition to your primary palette, pick up a titanium white. That's probably the most paint you will use. So it'll be likely the biggest container. Um, I go through this pretty quick in comparison to my carbon black, which I got at the same time. Feels like it's barely used. Um, so just a really small thing of carbon black would be just fine. And then if you want to use a brown, getting something like a burnt umber can be helpful too. If you are looking to expand your palette beyond just this primary palette, Paints that I use the most would be yellow ochre and sap green. So yellow ochre is just a really nice muted gold color. And sap green, I love. I use this all the time, probably because I primarily paint landscapes and basic lands. And it's just so nice to have a natural green that um, is much more convenient to match things like trees and grass. Anything beyond this palette, you can really just get craft paints. So if I'm looking just to get a fun purple or a specific shade of blue that might be more convenient, go for a craft paint. There's no need to spend the extra money on a specialty color from a more expensive brand if you don't need to. And so I think these work just fine. Now I don't use these as my primary colors. I just don't know how to work with them as well as knowing these more established shades. Um, but these work great for more specialty colors. I know some of these companies offer smaller sets. I think the first fluid acrylics that I bought were half fluid ounce paints. They came in a set of generally the primary colors, some extra ones too, but that was an okay place to start. If I can find the one I originally got, I'll definitely link it below. Otherwise, again, just really focus on those primary colors and build from there, either from what paints you already have or looking at some of these more craft grade paints. The brushes I use most fall into five general categories, filbert, round, liner, tiny, and nasty. So for filbert brushes, these are the ones I use the most. I tend to like having one that's a little bit larger and one that's a little bit smaller. So you'll see with a filbert brush, it tends to have more of a rounded edge, not like a round brush where it's still flat, um, but it does have a little bit more of a rounded edge. And I just prefer to use these for my base layer as well as for the majority of my painting. So a large and a small filbert brush Round brushes are helpful too. I like using a pretty small sized round brush. These are also overlapping quite a bit with liners, which are just super helpful for those really fine details. These tiny brushes, sometimes they're called spotters um, or detailers. These are sometimes nice to have. They are much harder to work with. So if you aren't comfortable with working with such a tiny brush, you can always use a liner or a really small round brush. And these nasty brushes, so when you have a brush and you just haven't taken care of it, and you're thinking about throwing out, keep it. I use these for splattering paint or when I'm just wanting to dab paint onto a card. So these are helpful to keep too. So if you're looking to get some new brushes, I would think about at least one filbert. I like the larger size for maybe a full art card where I have to have a lot more coverage, but you can get away with just this more medium, smallish size filbert. For a round brush, something smaller. And you could get away with just a really fine liner brush here. And if you don't have any nasty brushes, that is okay. You will get one eventually. Um, but I think this is a really good foundation when we're talking about these really small card alters, especially if you're just doing a border extension. Now, if you are doing something bigger, it is nice to have a larger filbert brush available just for more coverage. Now selecting a palette I think is really going to come down to personal preference. I do not use a palette like this for acrylic paints. This is really primarily for watercolors. 
So the main two types of palettes you can think about are a dry palette and a wet palette. A wet palette typically involves a type of sponge that you soak in water and then a piece of paper that will go over and become completely wet. So these are really useful if you run into the problem of your paints drying out too quickly, if you want to come back another day and work on it. I tend to just not have the patience to set up a wet palette. I think it is preferable, especially if you're using heavy body acrylics and you're looking to use more moisture in your painting. The palette I use the most is actually just this palette paper. Your paints are going to dry out faster, but I find I work in such small amounts anyways. Um, when I'm done, I tend to just remix the paints. When working with the card altar itself, I find it easiest to have some sort of backing that can move instead of the card. This just helps keep paint from getting on the back of the card while you're painting. So how this works is you can take the card that you're planning to alter, use a little bit of painter's tape. I just use this blue painter's tape. Loop a bit on the back and stick onto a surface. Whether it's a heavier cardstock paper, I also use notebooks as well, and these are ones that you can reuse um, as a backing. Once you're done painting, you just remove the tape. And if you're like me, you can keep all of the backings. Another must-have supply is just toothpicks, which you probably have around the house already. Nothing special about these, but I use these for cleaning up borders. It's just helpful for getting off some of that extra paint. You may also have these on hand too, just having some q-tips is helpful. One technique that I sometimes use is using a little bit of acetone, which is just nail polish remover. If you put a little acetone on a q-tip um, for some of the cards, you can strip away the ink and just leave the foil card. So that is one technique that it's helpful to have some q-tips. Otherwise, I use the q-tips if a little bit of extra water gets on the card that I need to dab up. Once you are done with everything, you probably want to protect your card in some way. So there's a few different methods. One of those options is using a varnish. And you can choose between a liquid varnish or an aerosol varnish. I prefer using this satin archival varnish, which is an aerosol varnish or an aerosol spray. You just need to be careful to be in a well-ventilated room when using this. I tend to just go outside. I still use a face mask when working with it um, because you definitely don't want to breathe this in and it does take, take some time for these to dry. I also double sleeve all of my altars. I prefer using a side loader for your inner sleeve or for your perfect fit sleeve. Usually I don't run into an issue with a altered card being too thick to fit, but it is nice just to be able to slip in the short way and then um, just your typical sleeve. So here's a full art card and it can still fit just fine in a perfect fit. Other just miscellaneous Supplies that are helpful to have on hand, just some paper towels, um, having some sort of container for your water. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you use any of these supplies or if there are supplies that you have found um, tend to work better. And thank you so much for watching.